Today's Thursday and Thursdays are dedicated to answering your questions. If there is something I can help with, please post it as a comment in this or any other video. Channel members have the preference, so you might consider joining. Why wouldn't you? Today's question comes from Chrisari2751, I think. It is about GitOps. Actually, it's not a single question, but multiple ones, all related to organization of GitOps instances. Here goes the first one. How many GitOps or Argo CD instances are recommended for multiple environments? I'll answer this one and all other questions in this video using Argo CD as examples, but the same should apply equally to Flux or any other GitOps tool. Let's start by dividing those environments into two major groups. There can be permanent and ephemeral environments. Ephemeral environments are those that uh, come and go. We might, for example, create a namespace or even better, a virtual cluster for every pull request, run some automated tests, follow if you have to with manual tests and do whichever other activities we might want to perform to validate the pull request. Once we are done, we would merge that pull request to the mainline and while doing that, automatically remove that ephemeral environment. At any given moment, there could be one, two, five, ten or hundreds of those environments, only for their number to drop a few moments later or even to go back to zero. The number of those environments would depend on the number of active pull requests. When working with ephemeral environments, I would not even bother using GitOps. I don't see a reason for it. They are ephemeral, short-lived, so I don't necessarily care to know what is the desired state. Security benefits of pooling instead of pushing releases are not that important, and so on and so forth. Many, if not all, of the benefits of practicing GitOps do not apply to ephemeral environments. On the other hand, challenges of combining workflows that build, push, test, and perform other one-shot actions and asynchronous state management are unnecessary burden. So, even though I'm a big and a really huge proponent of GitOps, I tend to skip it completely for ephemeral environments. Instead, I manage them in the same way as we were managing releases in the past. Create a pull request that triggers a workflow that will build the release candidate and an ephemeral environment, be it a namespace, a virtual cluster or anything else we might be using. Inside that environment, deploy the release candidate by executing from the workflow kubectl apply, helm install or whichever other command you were using to deploy something to Kubernetes before you discovered GitOps. From there on, run your tests or do whatever else you might need to do to validate it. Once you're done, merge that pull request to the mainline. That should trigger another workflow that will do whatever needs to be done and within the context of this answer, remove that ephemeral environment. By using ephemeral environments, every pull request can be validated independently of address. And since they are ephemeral, we don't use resources more than necessary. As far as I'm concerned, most of the benefits of GitOps do not apply in those cases, so I'm ignoring it altogether for ephemeral environments. As a matter of fact, sometimes it might be too hard and impractical to use GitOps in ephemeral environments. For example, we might give each developer a namespace or a virtual cluster to which they would connect from their laptops and working inside them as if they are local. That is, more often than not, a better way to develop applications that should run in Kubernetes. In those cases, using GitOps is equally silly as using GitOps to manage resources in Minikube on a laptop, let's say. So, going back to the initial question, I will assume that it relates to permanent environments that exist forever and ever. That would certainly be production, but can also be pre-production. More than those two is often a sign of not being able to leverage ephemeral environments. Nevertheless, what I'm about to say applies equally to any number of environments as long as they're permanent. Actually, I think that within GitOps context, environments do not matter. What matters are clusters. Production environment will most likely not be in the same cluster as other environments, yet we might have production in one or many clusters. Even when there are multiple environments in the same cluster from, let's say, Argo CD perspective, they're all the same except that we might have different Argo CD projects, one for each environment. In any case, the question about Argo CD or Flux instances is mostly related to clusters, not environments. So I will imagine that there are staging, pre-production and production clusters, for example. On top of that, we have different repositories where we keep stuff. 
I won't go into details how to organize those repositories since I already covered that in one of the previous AMA videos. Look it up if you missed it. There could be branches or directories instead of repos. The logic is still the same. Each of them contains the desired state we want to have in one or more of those clusters. Or if those clusters act as control planes elsewhere. Now we're finally coming to the actual question. How do we manage all those clusters with GitOps? Where do we put Argo CD or Flux instances? One option is to have a single Argo CD instance in one of those or a dedicated cluster. Let's say that it is in the production cluster, for example. That instance would pull the desired state from all those repositories and depending on the destination we set, manage resources in the same cluster or in any of the other clusters. The advantage of that approach is in reduced maintenance and the UI. Maintenance issue is, in my opinion, overrated. Running one or three Argo CD instances is more or less equally easy or equally hard. However, having a single web UI to see what's going on inside all the clusters is nice, as long as we really have the need to see all of those in the same place. I don't believe that's important since those clusters represent different environments and we rarely need to correlate runtime data from them. I don't believe that is important since those clusters represent different environments and we rarely need to correlate runtime data from all of them. The major downside is security. One of, in my opinion, major advantages of GitOps is that it is pool-based model. A process inside the cluster is querying Git and synchronizing resources based on the desired state it gets from it. If those resources are inside the cluster where Argo CD is running, we can completely, completely lock that cluster to any outside access. We can set it up so that nothing, nothing gets in. And that's brilliant, since we do not need a write access to such a cluster. We might need to enable read access for, let's say, observability purposes, but write operations can be completely, completely disabled. However, if we have an Argo CD instance that manages resources in other clusters, then we do need to give it access to those clusters and by doing that, jeopardize security. The alternative is to have one Argo CD instance in each cluster. We can configure one to watch one repository, the other to watch the other repository, and we can, for example, configure the third to watch multiple repos. In some cases, we might even choose to have two clusters be exactly the same, in which case they would be watching the same repository. I personally prefer the latter method. It is more secure and more elegant. However, the answer might change at the large scale when both approaches result in mostly downsides. If you would have dozens or even hundreds of clusters, maintenance of that many Argo CD instances might become an issue. Having separate UI for each might be too much. Yet, at such a scale, security downsides of having a single instance manipulating all those clusters might pose a risk as well. Not to mention that such an Uber instance might suffer performance penalties. In those cases, I don't think that open source Argo CD offers a viable solution and you might want to look for a solution designed to run at scale securely. In that case, you might want to consider Acuity. Okay, that was the first one. And here are a few other questions from Chris Ari 2751, which I might or might not have answered. Let's see, is one Argo CD instance enough? One Argo CD instance might be enough, but I recommend one in each cluster, no matter how many environments are in that cluster. Once you reach scale, when the number of clusters is double or triple digits, you might want to consider a solution that goes beyond open source Argo CD. Until that moment, I recommend one Argo CD instance in each cluster. Next one is, should you separate prod and non-prod? The answer is yes, yes, you should. Keep production in a separate cluster from other environments. If you want to save on cost, you can have only two clusters, one for production and one for everything else, whatever that is. Just don't keep production and non-production in the same cluster since the purpose of non-production is, among other things, to deduce that it is safe to promote something to production. If possible, keep production as the only permanent environment and everything else as ephemeral environments. If that is too much of a stretch, you can have a production-like permanent environment, but there should be no need for more than that. There's more. Should you separate GitOps Argo CD instances per team or per namespace? Separate them per cluster. 
Argo CD has a mechanism to deal with permissions if that's what you need. There are also other ways to prevent one team stepping over the other if that's the concern. Here comes the last one. Is there another recommendation if you want to use Argo workflow or Argo rollouts? Here it goes. Use Argo workflows for one-shot actions like building, testing, etc. etc. Use Argo rollouts for progressive delivery like Canary deployments. Use Argo CD for synchronization of the desired states stored in Git and Kubernetes clusters. Most likely, you should use all three of those and then you should add Argo events to trigger Argo workflows when runs should be executed on events other than git commits. So thank you Chrisari2751 for your question. I hope, I really hope I managed to answer some of them, if not all. To everyone else, feel free to ask your questions in comments and consider joining the channel. There will be another round of answers next week. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.